Hey guys, I'm John B. And I'm Callie Lewis. We have a special unboxing. It's a coffee maker. Ooh, welcome to Geek Beat. This episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by lynda.com. Well, this isn't any unboxing, any coffee maker. No, this is not. This is like a remote controlled coffee maker. Yeah, or we're something. gonna get to that in a second. But first, just so you know, I was outside. I don't know where you were. I was outside sweeping the parking lot. I was wearing my shirt first. That's, uh, that's for that's the true. record. I had to I, throw something on. I had my geek beat fitness shirt on. Then she came in and put that one on. Then she looked know. at me and she was like, "Why are you wearing that shirt?" <laughs> I did. Why am I wearing that shirt? Why are you? You? I was wearing it first. Well, you can get one of your own and be Thrinkies, Twinkies, Thrinkies. No, at you can't. TV slash shop. You can get one though. You can get a TV slash shop. Yeah. All right. Well, I came in from sweeping the parking lot and blowing the the parking lot. You were to working. Have and fun. You had. You were pleasantly interrupted by Milton and Bill, Yay. who have come to join us. Thanks for joining, guys. Thanks for having Thanks us. Having. So you guys are in town because you are part of a the technical, technical standards group. Yeah. Right. And you guys work on things related to the DMX 512 protocol standard, standard exactly. among other things, right? Right, and that's one of the major things that we end up working on is the interoperability in the entertainment industry. How to get lighting control systems yeah. from one manufacturer to work with dimmers and fixtures and things from another manufacturer. So when you go to that concert that you're looking at, wondering out how all those lights work and how it all makes this is the stuff that makes all that happen. Awesome. Well, we like it because uh, one of the benefits of our moving to this new building is that we're going to be able to build out our own real proper right. studio space. Mm -hmm. And we have been dreaming of implementing DMX controlled stuff for a while now. And frankly, I don't know anything about any of this. So you guys got to give us for? a little bit of a primer. It's DMX 512 is the name of the protocol. Mm -hmm. DMX stood for digital multiplex. Oh, okay. And it's simply a high-speed serial protocol. And, uh, and, and then the 512 is because we can run 512 individual devices if we want over one little piece of nice. wire. Nice! Like 512 coffee makers? Oh, like 512 nice. coffee makers. What is the awesome. deal? Okay, so you guys <laughs> Where's brought, my coffee? <laughs> you guys brought this coffee maker with us, and it's just like a Mr. Coffee, right? But be sure to turn it around yeah, a little good, bit. But yeah. over here... It's Look at this. You've got the power cord back here, but this... There is a... You guys must have cut that in, right? You hacked this thing together? Well, this is a coffee pot that started its life as a regular old Mr. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but the company that I work for is noted for making things that are technically possible, but of questionable usefulness in the real world. I, this is pretty so, useful, I gotta say. <laughs> so well, what does it do, though? Yeah. So the idea here is that you've got Mr. Coffee here running a show. You've got a play. And during the course of the play, well, of course, you'd like to have fresh brewed coffee during intermission. Well, with Mr. Coffee with a DMX 512 connection on it, by golly, you can have a lighting cue during the first act trigger the coffee pot to start, and then your coffee is ready when the intermission comes around. The ultimate nice. remote control. It is. <laughs> the fact that you could have purchased a coffee maker with a clock and yeah. set a timer. Nice. We don't do that. No, no, no. Why would you Come do that? Why would you do that? I have this huge DMX control board here. I might as well have a knob on right. it. Exactly. Run Absolutely. that fader off. My coffee's on. Although, you know, if you think about it from a pure, like, um, uh, set design perspective. Mm -hmm. This is also a product you could you could implement on set. Like if you had a, yeah, a you exactly. know, mm -hmm. uh, exactly. if you were doing a, uh, a show and the coffee needed to start at a certain right. time, you could yeah. remotely turn on. I just hope the actors set. don't take and drink the coffee because yeah. it might be too hot at that point. Maybe. Right. <laughs> just, yeah. just think I it. don't know. Okay, so um, I think one of the other interesting things that you guys point out, I had no idea, was that the DMX 512, it works off of a single cable, essentially. Like, how does that work? I mean, first of all, what are all these pieces we've got here? Well, let me get to we've these in knobs. just a moment. Okay, okay. First, let's start with this. This, one, uh, this one is a DMX 512 controller, and it's just a very, very small device that is a generator of DMX 512. It's intended as a technician's tool. Okay. It, is okay. it like a volume because it goes from 1 to 10? Well, in the no, case it of this, but it doesn't go to 11. This what? guy is actually called the Apathy Minus. 
Wait, I just thought of something. It's zero to ten, so technically it does go to eleven. That's right. There are eleven points okay, on the scale. Right, okay. <laughs> so what does it do again? <laughs> well, when, when you turn it on and the little light begins blinking, at that point the knob actually controls all 512 of those slots of information all at once. Oh, wow. So you can bring an entire lighting rig up with one knob. And it's got a button on here as well. And with the button, you can use it to select an individual channel. But we call it the apathy minus. It's everything the original apathy was and less. Nice. <laughs> so if you wanted to get to slot number 321, you take the knob to zero and you tap it. You go one, oh. two, three, uh -huh. pause, one, two, pause, one. And now you've just brought up 321. Questionable usefulness. But oh, also, nonetheless, I, yes, I, exactly. I just want to do that. Yeah. I want to count well, Can you imagine, take that, and you have a big rig hanging above the stage, you plug in, yeah. just turn all Everybody the lights all up at once. That would be really cool. Oh, without you have having the power. to start up the big expensive yeah. That's console. like an yes. entire board all in one exactly. dot. Exactly. Exactly. And one button. One that is really, one cool. Button. That's really so, cool. That's just, like I could say, a technician's tool. Uh -huh. The other thing is the rad. This is more of a real product. Okay. Again, it's a, it's a technician's tool. But the idea is another one of the protocols we developed is called Remote uh, Device Management, or RDM. And the RAD is a remote addressing device. Yeah. The coffee pot has got a, a DMX address. You need to is say... Is that like an IP address? Kind of, sort of. A little bit different, there's okay. that in there too. But okay. within DMX, you can have multiple devices with the same address. So when I bring up one, I might be bringing up two coffee pots. Oh, so, so like any... Any coffee pot, like you could have 20 of them and yep. all could have the same number. And yep. when it sees, oh, turn on number one, then they all They're say, all oh, I'm number one. On. Or exactly. I could have a coffee pot and a light at the same address. Oh, turn them on so and I light, light up my coffee pot. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay. So in order to set the, this thing's address for DMX 512, Notice there are no switches or mm. menus or anything. Mr. Coffee didn't put a, a you know, yeah. controller yeah, in there. I don't know that. why. Yeah. So to handle that, come along the, with the RAD. And the RAD turns on, says it's a RAD. Nice. And we push the button that says next. And it, oh, and it found that? the coffee pot. That sounds like a cat. The it's coffee kind pot of purring. Purring. It is purring. And it tells me that the coffee pot is set to address number one. Okay. Uh, I can change it to say three. address three, and it saves it to the coffee pot and then stops purring and nice. goes and looks for so another So now device. this coffee pot can do something different than this coffee pot than this coffee pot. Right, right, yeah. right. So forth. The power in the RAD is the RDM protocol because the coffee pot's right here with us. But what if it was a lot of lighting fixtures 50 right. feet up in the air? It lets you get to changing things about the fixture to do, manage the fixture without having to get a ladder. And sort of the guiding light behind making the protocol was, is it faster than a person with a ladder? So, so. let me just ask a question. So let's say that we had lights up on, a, you know, really high up on the I don't the know, rig. like a 25 foot cycle? Or like on a cycle. Oh, just foot cycle. Foot. So yeah. if, we had, if we had something like that, yeah. and we had the, these cables coming down to a central location, we could take this little device, plug it into one light, and say, okay, you are now on, you are now number one. And then we could go to another light, and you could say, you are now number, number two. two. And we never go up there, we're just connecting right. the cable right. that was, that would otherwise be, let's say, connected to a, control board or that's something. Right. That's the idea. That is really cool. It is. Yeah. That's that super simple. So even I could do that. And then you take RDM <laughs> further and our coffee pot can't do it, but you want to find out what temperature that light's at or what personality it might be working at. What do you at. mean? Like if it's, uh, you know, oh, uh, you know, if it's uh, shy or something? Well, I mean, right. the, well, our manufacturers design all the lights to do different things. So maybe in one mode, it just does red, green, blue. But in another mode, it might add a fourth color, or maybe it allows it to strobe, or something like that. So they've got all sorts of different traits that the manufacturer designs in the yeah. light. So now, with RDM, you take another device, and all that information comes back to you. Whereas Milton likes to always point out, you go, hey, who are you up on that truss? I'm a moving light. Hey, Mr. Moving Light, what are you doing? I'm on fire. <laughs> 
So feedback from the fixture. And cool. That is really cool. cool. Don't you love it when you know something that your friends don't? You could learn all kinds of cool stuff to impress everyone with at lynda.com. And the skills you learn there could also help you earn a living. It's a double whammy. From 3D animation to editing video to logo design and learn how to put all that knowledge into practice with business courses. The best thing is you can do it anytime, anywhere, from home or the office. Don't worry, I won't tell. Go to lynda.com slash geekbeat and get seven days for free. Okay, so what are these other yeah. two devices? Other protocols that we've getting, gotten involved with, everybody wants to do everything with the Ethernet today. Oh, yeah. Of course. Okay, DMX 512 is wonderful. Mm -hmm. It has the limitation of 512 slots of data on one wire. But when we get to Ethernet, think of what it takes to light an entire theme park, for example. Yeah. It's not unusual to have on the order of 64,000 individual devices wow. that you want to control in a lighting system. And getting that across Ethernet is the way to do it. This is just one device. It's an example that has an Ethernet connection on the front, okay. an Ethercon. And then on the back, it uh, has DMX 512 connections. Okay. okay. So you have five of them. Four, uh, of them. four on okay. the back. So yeah, out of this, I could get four different streams of DMX coming out. So that's 2,000 plus devices I can run off this one box. Right. Wow. Oh, wow. So then right. you could have several of these boxes stacked up and daisy chained via Ethernet. Yep. Each one of them having five of those things on it, okay. and yeah. or, I can, or I can spread them around my theme park or my building right. or you know my concert stage yeah. and dump all sorts of data out wherever I need. Because unlike the home environment, <laughs> where we were. R2D2. <laughs> all right. David Foster's ringtone. <laughs> <Excellent. Right. laughs> unlike the home environment that we're all used to. We're working in really big places. As I like to say, when you start measuring the size of the job in acres, that's when you need to start talking about Ethernet distribution of lighting systems. Understood. Yeah, yeah. And the other one over here is just a single port version of the same thing. Oh, so Ethernet on one side and then DMX 512 on the other. And this is a power over Ethernet device. Okay. The, so, uh, so are you saying, uh, let me get this straight, let's pretend that we put uh, let's pretend that we put some light up in the front of our building. Yes. And we have our control uh, room way in the back of the building. We could use, let's say, just for an example, I could plug this mm -hmm. coffee pot into this thing. Yep. And we could have Ethernet coming into this jack. Yep. And Running we can control this right from there. the back. All Absolutely. the way from the back. How expensive nice. are these boxes? That's a uh, list price at about $800. Oh, okay. That explains it. <laughs> <Yeah. that. laughs> you may not want to use it for a coffee pot, yeah. John. <laughs> but why? You know, well, it's very, uh, yeah. And it's, you know, you're used yeah. to seeing a lot, mostly consumer goods. Yeah. One of the things that uh, is sort of characteristic of the kind of things that we do. I don't care. <laughs> That's true. It's going to be pretty strong. Yeah. It's heavy duty yeah. steel. Um, yeah. you want to stand standing on it, did on it just now. Did damage our floor? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 you know, we're yeah. In but the entertainment know, industry, we're no, you're right. Right. Yeah. We're working in concerts. Um, People are hard on outdoor stuff. events, yeah, different are. things like that. Yeah. yeah, it has to take a lot of abuse. Yeah. Sure, no doubt. I won't damage and, your floor, but you could do that. And as we always say in the business, the show must go on. It's yeah. got to work when we need it to exactly. work. That is true. Exactly. Yeah. It can't be just fickle right. and fragile. Or... Exactly. When we need it to happen, it's got to happen. When they press that button, those lights better come on. That's really awesome. Cool. Well, this is super exciting really stuff. Cool I, I'm totally glad that I got a break from sweeping the parking lot <laughs> and come in and uh, play. And I so, guess we can uh, hook up the coffee pot and get you some uh, caffeine before you go back out there. Yes, please. <laughs> I'm kind of going. Nice warm <laughs> coffee. Right? Yeah, yeah. And a nice hot August, some July summer but, in Texas. But the, only, the whole reason all of this happens is because a group of people get together called uh, Plaza Professional yeah. Lighting and Sound Association. We get together and we write the standards that let these people allow happen. everything yes. to talk to everything Absolutely. else. Right. And that is so important yes. because you can't buy one piece and not have it talk to another piece from a different manufacturer right. because your right. job just can't get done that just way. Just can't get done. And this is all done by volunteers too. Oh, our, our, our various businesses and all send us, but we all put the time in. We're here on a weekend making this That's all happen. That's true. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you guys coming by. By the way, if people where want to get more, more yeah, info, where, where can they get it? On everything. On, uh, <laughs> well, for everything. Okay. The well, internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the, the trade organization is called Plaza. It's P-L-A-S-A, -S -S and it's plaza.org. 
And for, uh, I'll put in my own yes, company. Yeah, how about you guys? Uh, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, the company I work for is called Doug Flanor Design. And uh, we're located at dfd.com, as in okay. deltafoxdelta.com. That's a good domain. Yeah. 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 People yeah. offer us money for that all the no time. No joke, wow. Yeah. We're accepting uh, bids starting in right. mid six figures. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And then the company I work for that I own is Candela Controls. And so I take all the different equipment from people like Doug Fleener and other manufacturers, and I put it together to make different things, different types of attractions. I do work in casinos and theme parks and museums and stuff. And, you and can maybe find soon it. the Geek House. And yeah. maybe the Geek House. <laughs> There's a nice little project back there to work on. Well, thank you guys so much for Thanks taking for time us. out of creating standards to come chat with us. That's right. <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for even more coverage on Geek Beat and thumbs up on YouTube. Sure, if you got them. We're out of here, Bye. guys. Bye.